All right, team, hopefully you're having a freaking awesome day today on this lovely meal planning party Saturday. We just finished the killer strength workout. No, I didn't record it. Should have been here. It was awesome. If you couldn't, that's okay. It was still awesome. You missed, but you didn't miss out on it at all because we're going to do it again, which is really cool. Okay. Now, what I want to talk about today, I think is really, really interesting um, that I think might help you in some of this planning thing. Okay. When we pull, pull ourselves back, and we're doing process, right? We're doing something, we're learning a new thing. I kind of think of it like, in fact, like, like we're working on a conveyor belt in a factory. And if that factory makes robots, like toy robots, and in front of us, we have instructions. We got, when it comes to our station, we've got the body in front of us, we've got the legs, arms, and head we got to attach. And the back is all open, and then the next station down, is they're the one that's going to go and like put the electronic stuff in it. So all our job is, is to put the head, the arms and the legs just in the things and the, the little cords kind of running through it. Okay. So somebody else can do the soldering and all that other stuff. Okay. So at a factory, that's like that, where all we do is plug five things into a thing. It would be really easy to have the same thing every time. Cause you can look at the little <clears throat> trapezoid, you can assume the top part's the neck, put the head on that. You can see that the arms are next because it would make sense. It's a, if it's a human looking robot, right? The arms go next. You can put the arms at the bottom, you put the arms at the top next to the head. Makes sense. I'm not speaking anything, I think, scientifically groundbreaking right now. Put the arms in, put the legs in, pull the cords through, easy, bang. But now, when we have two sets of robots, two schematics, two different colors, two different shapes, it can make things interesting because then you can, it's a higher likelihood of having a malfunction, putting the head in the wrong spot, especially if it's not just the trapezoid. What if it's a ball? And you're like, oh snap. Now I've got a ball to try to put something on top of it. It would be really challenging to have it in the right configuration because now not only do you have a head, two different heads, you have two sets of arms, two sets of legs. that You're trying to position in this ball now you can see is there's more complexity, what if there's three, what if there's four, what if there's five, and if it's your first day on the job, or you're still not accustomed to doing it often, what could that lead to? Consistent, uh, consistent for a while, consistent mistakes. And then you're like, well, I'm trying to do my best. But there's just so many moving parts. It's hard for me to be consistent over time. And so let's take that exact concept. And now let's move it into something even more complicated than that. Calories, macros, food. Because now in food, we also have, what do you like? What's going to make you feel full? What's actually going to taste good combination-wise? And we take that exact concept and we move it to constant variety. What's the likelihood that somewhere in this conveyor belt of putting together your food, that there's a mistake somewhere? There's a mishap. There's a whoopsie. A lot higher. So why is it that I'm a proponent of somebody doing an either A schedule a, B schedule or A, B with revolving dinners is that we have less schematics we're trying to screw with. We have less moving parts to where we can get really, really good at couple. And then from there, we can get better and better and better at others. Does that make sense? I think oftentimes what people want to do is they want to have so much variety in the beginning to stick with their stuff, which again, I 100% unequivocally understand. I'm not trying to say that you just have to be militant. What I am saying though, is if you add a lot of variety in your system and setup, and then things aren't functioning and we're like, I'm doing all of it. Yo, there's somewhere along the line in this conveyor belt that there's, I'm doing things right, but the end result of the robot looking correctly is not there. And luckily for us, luckily, because not long ago, it wasn't this way. We know how this stuff works. Like it just works. And it's not my way. It's not Chris's way of fat loss. If it was my way, yo, I would make peanut butter be the thing that makes you lose fat the most. 100%. Pizza has no calories in it. I would be my way. My way doesn't work, though. I've tried my way in the past. It doesn't work. What does work, though, is actual science, the real stuff, 
not the cold plunge burns 200 calories in 15 minutes real stuff. Not that. The real stuff of if we're not losing somewhere along the line. And we have to assume a bunch of things, right? When we're doing this whole robot putting together scenario, we have to assume that you have all the right pieces. So if, as an example, um, you didn't know why you need to hit protein, you just didn't do it. You just, whatever. Cool. That's like not putting the wires through the robot. The next person now can't do his job. And so he can't do his job. It's going to keep, the robot's going to keep going. Must be malfunction. You get there, robot's broken. You're like, oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't care about putting the wires through the thing. They're like, well, of course it's not going to work. How's it supposed to be battery operated? There's no wires connect the battery to the arms in the head. Lights, the functions, the little robot talking is not going to work. Or it's like, what if you didn't give yourself all the pieces? Like, not even all the pieces. What if you're given a schematic? This is where a lot of people start in the beginning. Is they're given a, a, a robot with all the parts. And you're like, well, how do I put it together? And I just figure it out. Just do it. Well, okay. Like, I could assume that the head goes here at the top, maybe. But maybe, too, maybe this robot's supposed to look super jacked. So maybe put it on the other side. But the other side has two holes at the bottom. You're like, well, I don't know. I would make the robot super strong, a V taper, looking like it's a big buff robot, not a small one, fat stomach. That's what I would do. I'd be wrong, though, because I'd put it the wrong way. And then I'd be confused why I'm wrong. Because I think the robot should look like this. This is why we have macros and calories to get rid of the what do you need to do? Do this, do these steps, do these workouts, drink this water, get good sleep. You do all those. That's a schematic. If we're not following it, then we go, oh, it's not the conveyor belt. Conveyor belt's problem. It's your problem. You're not doing it right. Which is good. It's your responsibility. Hell yeah, it's a good consequence. Cool, I'm not doing it. I shouldn't expect my robot to end up perfect. But if I'm following the instruction to what it seems right to me, my robot's all screwed up at the end, we have to go, okay, what's happening? And for some people, unfortunately, it's like, I'll tell you an example of somebody, there's somebody here, but I just hijacked their nutrition. So I'm going to take over the whole thing. Don't do anything. I'm going to do the whole thing. I'm going to tell you what to eat, how much to cook, how to cook it, what to buy, all of that. Don't do anything. And we did this for a couple weeks. And what we found, not because I wanted to, but because there was something in their process that was broken, but we did not know what it was. We had no idea because this person was clearly upset. They weren't losing weight, clearly, like visibly upset. And I'm upset that they're upset because that freaking sucks. I want them to crush it. So week one, I tell them what to do. Hit a weight loss low. Oh, interesting. Week two, weight loss low again. Oh, interesting. Weight three. We add some more variety. Weight didn't lose. Oh, interesting. Week four, weight loss low again. Oh, what changed between week three and week four? My fitness pal. My fitness pal had an incorrect entry by over 150 calories from a scanned item. Oh, big problem. Conveyor belt problem. Not a schematic problem, conveyor belt problem. Fix that. Took this person from what was supposed to be at about a 600 calorie deficit, maybe close to seven, quite honestly, depending on what exercise they're doing. But that problem led them to lose, instead of losing a pound and pound and a half a week, so they lose a pound in about four days or so, they lose a pound of fat in 12 days. Oh, big problem. Doubles the amount of time it would take. Fix that problem, boom, problem solved. On, on fast track now. We found part of it was that, there's some other things, I'm not gonna get into it, but those things, ooh, big problems. So when it comes to this, when it comes to these meal planning parties, my goal to have problems, like we're gonna go over somebody who I'm doing for today, is I'm not gonna record it though, because it's for people here, okay? But at the top, we see, okay, is it an instruction thing? Don't think so. Is it a conveyor belt thing? Probably. 
something down here. So we're going to dive into that today. So with that being said, watch this video, um, come to the next meal planning party, and I will talk to you guys that are not here later. We're going to get on with our meal planning party. Bye.